Hamster, we gotta get out of here. B Bomb, what are you up to? I was tracking down El Dorado with the help of Sir Francis Drake's lost journal, but my plane was shot down by a private militia, and I crash landed here without a map. We need to be careful as we make our way around because this place is crawling with heavily armed mooks, and not to mention these freaky booby traps. I I'm telling you, man, the Spanish were on to something, and don't even get me started on the Germans. They had some sort of secret plot to... Are you even listening to me? So what movie were you watching this time? It, uh, it wasn't a movie. It, it's Uncharted. What's the difference? <laughs> oh, come on. This game is so much more than its story. I sure hope so, considering the story so far is just average. But I love this story. It's like the movie National Treasure, but instead you add Nolan North instead of casting Nicholas Cringe. You don't say. Uncharted's gameplay takes the dying 3D puzzle platformers of the previous generation and finds a new reimagined home for it on the PS3. Great, so all the awkward third-person jumping and finagling around the terrain and figuring out what's interactable and what's not is back in full force from the likes of Tomb Raider. But it's not even close to being that finicky, though some jumps and climbing segments might leave you a little frustrated. Also, like Tomb Raider, there's some third-person shooting segments that leave something to be desired. They simply feel like padding between cutscenes and puzzle platforming. But those segments were particularly revolutionary, with smooth controls, lots of weapons, melee combat combos, and ways to take cover and use the environment to your advantage. I specifically remember some shootouts and enemy ambushes that were particularly challenging. There's also these vehicle-driven action sequences where you need to manage swerving to safety while also shooting enemies and obstacles in your path. It's fun and all, but once again only appears when the plot demands it. I found those parts to be a nice change of pace and really made me feel like I was playing a role in an intense action movie. I will say though that because of this plot-first gameplay follows formula, you won't really have any traditional bosses or even realize how far you are in the game unless you're really like counting chapters or something. And the final boss is more like a final encounter and isn't very climactic as a fight in and of itself. But the ending totally is cinematic and theatrical! Uh, okay, not the gameplay, but the story! Stow it from the plot section, Bob! We're talking gameplay! Yeah, but... It feels kind of weird. I mean, who's playing Uncharted for just the gameplay anyway? Good point. Just in case we didn't wave it around enough, we're playing the PS4 Remastered Collection. It wasn't really relevant to bring up until now, considering how most of those changes were purely graphical. This game looks amazing. Naughty Dog does an amazing job of color theming each scene to match the pacing and the plot by the use of changing sunlight and environmental colors to both make the player feel the intended cinematic effects, but to also really feel like they're progressing in a meaningful way. You can get a better look at how this works with their extensive concept art galleries that you unlock throughout the game. I've got to say, I really wish more developers utilized color and presentation in the same way that Uncharted makes it all feel so natural, like a cinematic movie. This does so much for the story that... Oh, come on, can we just move on to the story already? This game looks great on the PS3 and the PS4. We good? Good! Bam! Done! Moving on! I don't really see how we can avoid spoilers here, so bear with- So you play as the sneaky yet comical fun treasure hunter Nathan Drake, who's joined by his partner Sully, looking to strike it rich and pay off his debts by finding the long lost treasure of Sir Francis Drake, El Dorado. So the pair- They meet up with Elena Fisher, a reporter looking to get the scoop on their next discovery. Turns out that the pair had actually planned on ditching Elena once they got their hands on the next piece of the puzzle in their quest, a lost journal hidden in Sir Francis's old empty coffin buried at sea. 
Anyway, they then... They then travel to a temple hidden in the Amazonian rainforest in hopes of finding their treasure. The trail then leads them through some unlikely finds like a wrecked German U-boat, where they find coordinates to where their target was delivered, and they soon discover that El Dorado was not actually a fabled city of gold, but actually a massive, solid gold statue. But Sully's shady debtors Roman and Navarro catch wind of the operation and ambush the pair in the jungle, shooting Sully and stealing the map to their treasure. Nate meets up with Elena while escaping, and the two frantically track down the hidden island in order to beat the bad guys to the treasure. On the island, the two fight off mercenaries while investigating the island like a crime scene in hopes of reaching the treasure first. Eventually, Sully is found to be alive and forced to work for Roman at gunpoint, leaving Nate and Elena to rescue him and find out the truth about the treasure themselves. If I may be so intrusive to point out, this whole time you are slaughtering people by the dozens in a strange separation from the character's normal witty and amusing banter. But it turns out that you're not the only things on the island killing mooks by the truckload. That's because we discover that Sir Francis Drake was actually sabotaging his own expedition to keep El Dorado a secret and hidden away on the island forever by sinking his own ships and flooding the customs house. Due to the fact that the Spanish colonists who had originally taken the treasure from the Amazonian jungle had all transformed into weird humanoid vicious zombie monsters called Descendants. I'm certainly not a fan of how this game's realistic and believable story up to this point was so suddenly disjointed from reality with the inclusion of this weird supernatural element. But, the but this didn't stop the Germans from trying to weaponize the statue and failing miserably. And of course, didn't stop Roman and Navarro from doing the same. As the characters all discover the secrets of the island and converge on El Dorado simultaneously, Navarro turns on Roman, tricking him into turning into a descendant so that Navarro can solely attempt to get away and sell the dangerous statue as a bioweapon. Nate leaps and shoots his way aboard, leading up to a final confrontation with Navarro, where the statue slips out of reach and drags Navarro down by a rope tangled around his leg deep into the dark ocean depths, never to be seen again. So anyway, the- Oh yeah, and then Nate and Elena have this fleeting romantic moment after killing a small country's worth of people and gaining nothing, while quickly getting interrupted by Sully who managed to find an overflowing chest of lost Spanish gold. Everyone laughs, the sun sets, and credits roll. Okay, so with all that out of the way, I would just like to say- the soundtrack for this series is phenomenal. It's definitely something you'll want to add to your video game music playlists. It's alright. I mean, honestly, there's nothing very memorable or even that hummable here. Come on, but you've got to admit that everything is orchestrated in a way to thematically play into the beat of the ongoing action and drama. It sounds more like a movie soundtrack than anything. And honestly, it kind of is a movie soundtrack. But I like this movie! This game basically invented and perfected witty banter and funny character interactions during gameplay, making all of the characters feel real and relatable. I highly recommend this series to non-gamers due to how approachable it is with its story-centered action, but also it doesn't fully neglect engaging gameplay, unlike some franchises. This is easily the weakest of the mainline Uncharted series, but let it be known that the other games learned a tremendous amount from this groundbreaking Milestones achievements. Nolan. North. The positive gamer in me had a blast with Uncharted Drake's Fortune, giving it a golden 8 out of 10. The story is engaging, the characters are incredible, and the gameplay is surprisingly good. I hear lots of fans telling newcomers to this series to skip the first entry, but I'd confidently argue against overlooking this early masterpiece. The Critical Gamer in me had some gripes with Uncharted Drake's Fortune, giving it an average 5 out of 10. The gameplay can get a little intrusive and shoehorned at times, and the game leaves you little reason for replayability, but even still, looking back on the series, the original Uncharted shines as nothing less than greatness from small beginnings. But what do you think? Let us know how your positive and critical sides rate Uncharted Drake's Fortune in the comments below. But if you honestly think this series is better off without its groundbreaking original title... Then you're just playing with yourself. Do you have an idea for a new episode of Playing With Myself? 
Join the discussion on Discord using the new Patreon perks to nominate and vote for future episodes. Patreon members also get first picks, so check out the links in the description for more information. And as always, thanks to our amazing Patreon members, Atomic Thomas, Cameron, Arrow, Kai, Ben, Rowan, Erica, Sid, and Denny. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more, and we will see you all in the next video. Boop!